Then I was like, 6.30 rolled around, boom, got myself together, went to take the COVID test. And as uh, soon as I uh, uh, get out the elevator, um, I saw Ric Flair walking by, you know. <laughs> and uh, Rick goes, hey, Buck, what's going on, brother? <laughs> and I go, hey, Rick, what's going on, bro? I mean, what's going on? You ready, man? You ready for tomorrow, man? No, I'm ready for the night, man. We're getting ready to party, man. Stay a little... Stay all night, stay a little longer, brother. And I'm like, oh, man, yeah, all right, bro. He said, come on, man, let's go out, man. Let's go to the bar, man, let's go to the bar. I said, no, nah, man, I'm going to go take the COVID test, man. And, and uh, he's like, all right, well, I'm, go, I'm going to the bar. And uh, Double Jack and Coke, right? I got it for you. I'll meet you at the bar. And I was like, oh, man. <laughs> so I, went to, I went and got the COVID test, man, and I run into uh, JBL and the and uh, a couple of the boys, Rikishi, you know, and I'm like, oh, man, it's going to be good, man. Uh, I'm like, cool, you know, took the COVID test. And I said, I'm going to go have a drink with Rick, you know, so I can, you know, have a drink, bounce, and get back up to the hotel room and, you know, get my food and get dug in for the UFC. And uh, got with Rick, man, I go, you know, one double jack, you know, and 730 roll around, you know, I'm three double jacks in. uh <laughs> 8.30 roll around. I'm oh, no, no. <laughs> I've double checks in. And uh, nine, nine, about nine, nine o'clock roll around. And uh, I say, brother, I'm tapping. I got to go. I got to go, bro. I got to go. And uh, Rick was pretty much down, too. He was like, all right, bro. And then, then somebody goes, no, nah, man, we can't go get Lee right now. Taker's coming right now. We got to stay right here for a little while. I'm like, okay, cool. Taker came and First thing he did was order a round of shots of Jack Daniels for everybody. And he told a bartender to keep them coming. <laughs> so <laughs> it's 10 o'clock. <laughs> I'm three shots of Jack in now, along with the five double Jacks in Coke. <laughs> the room is spinning at this point. <laughs> I wanted to go to the Here's bathroom to, to throw up. <laughs> and, I, and Rick Flair, he finally tapped out at this. So I've been there for three hours drinking uh, oof. with no food on my stomach at all. And uh, Rick Flair finally tapped out after, you know, uh, Taker came down. And I told Take Man, I got my help Rick get up to his room. <laughs> Trying to help myself get to my room, uh, stumbling and holding on to the wall. And I got in my room and I saw the food and it made me want to throw up. I couldn't even oh, eat. Oh, no. The only thing I could eat was the bread and the water that I had to try to get this alcohol out of my system. And it was the worst night I ever had in my life. But the best night at the same time because we had so much fun, man, hanging out with the boys. It was just such a great night, you know, reminiscing old times, whatnot. And then we had you know, the farewell to Taker um, the following night. And um, we were all, all the, all the same guys that were in the bar, a couple of guys, uh, they were at the farewell, you know, for Taker. So that meant we were at the end of the night. So we didn't get back to the hotel oh. to 11. And then um, Rick was like, I'll meet you at the bar, brother. And I was like, okay, I'll meet you at the bar, bro. <laughs> I went from the bottom floor straight to the top. <laughs> I didn't see anybody. <laughs> I went in my room. I closed that door. I got and you know, I had a nice steak that I had brought from the building too, you know, nice filet mignon. I had some shrimp cocktail with some kale, you know, mm. and some fried rice and a, and, a, and a big thing of bread. Also, and um, I say, man, they're, gonna, they're not going to mess it up this time. So I went in there, man, I ate. I knew Because I knew I had to get up at 5 o'clock this morning. There's no way I would have been able to, you know, run with those guys, you know, two nights in a row. I, I could have, but it just would have been a bad night. And then uh, I wake up this morning. It's, um, it's 5.45. Alarm clock goes off. My flight is at 7. I'm at the airport, so I didn't have to run or rush or anything. Go downstairs, check out. And, and who's coming from the bar? At 5.30 in the morning, MVP. And I go, brother, what what are you doing down here? What are you doing up so early? He goes, you know, man, we've been up all night. And we just now get ready to go to bed. I'm going to get something to eat. 
and then I'm gonna go to my room. So he was still in the same clothes he had on oh. when I seen him. I was like, you gotta be kidding me, you know? And uh, I was like, man, there's no way. I would have been so miserable if I would have stayed up and drank last night and I, and I, forgive me, you know, wrestling gods, forgive me for bailing out on the boys last night because I sure did, <laughs> bailed out. I chickened out. I couldn't do it. My stomach just could not take it uh, two nights in a row. And I knew I was coming home to my kids. Now, the thing is, if I would, if it would have been one of those tours, you know, where we were out, you know, for, you know, seven, 14 days, it, it, that, that's different, you know. But when you're getting on a flight to come home, you, you, you just don't want to have that feeling, man. You just don't. But uh, we had we had such a great time. And, and But then again, to top it off, you know, the farewell of the undertaker. That's what we yeah. got to talk about, man. We got we, to we, we, we got to get deep into that one, but I wanted to ask you before we get off the story, at what point in night one where you were there with taker and flair and Rikishi and, and all these guys, at what point of the night did this photo happen? That's when we was good and drunk. You know, we was having, <laughs> I was going to say, but look at, you know, look at taker. He's uh, so me, happy. Let me tell you what stands out of this photo right here. Me and Godfather was having a contest, you know, and you, you probably can notice what the contest is, right? The tricep. <laughs> we, both were, we both were making sure we were flexing in every photo that we would take. We, we, we were measuring each other's tricep. This dude had the most definition in every photo that we would do all night. That was a contest that him and I had, man. We had so much fun, man. Tim White, you know, the Godwins, man. Oh, man. Uh, Savio Vega, you know, Rakishi, you know. It's Did great. you know Savio real well? Yeah, man. Savio Vega, man. One of the best dudes you're ever going to meet, man. As well as one of the, you know, greatest that ever um, was produced out of Puerto, uh, Puerto Rico. Uh, he's uh, Puerto, Puerto Rico's finest, man. And he goes out there. And performed. He performed at a very high level when he was on the roster with WWF at the back, back of the day. He's one of those guys that you can look at and say, "Man, this guy is good. He's real good." Um, and he was uh, very, very unassuming. Um, he wasn't the guy that was making a whole lot of noise or anything like that. Right. But when Savio went out in the ring and performed, he had nothing but good matches. Um, he was a guy that knew the business inside and out. Still does. He's he's a guy that's still getting the ring and you know partake. Uh, uh, every every now and then, well, uh, of course, before uh, COVID, I think even now he's back um, out there doing some independent stuff. So he's a guy, man, that um, have given his life to this business, and uh, he loves it, man. And that moment right there, uh, just being around the boys, uh, man, I'm sure he uh, treasure you know uh, moments like that. Man, all of us do, man. Look at us, man. 